What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, do you guys remember this guy? The heat bit? Oh man, what a mess of a product. But do you guys remember when we opened it up, stripped it out, and pulled out the ASIC or what was left of the ASIC inside? Well, let me show you guys what I decided to do with it. Listen up miners, I gotta ask, what mining pool do you have your ASICs on? Now the bigger question, why? Reliability, security, profitability, and uptime are must-haves for serious crypto miners. All reasons why I've been running my new Bitcoin, Caspa, and Script miners on ViaBTC.com. ViaBTC.com has a unique, one-of-a-kind mining mechanism called Smart Mining, which unlocks higher returns for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash miners. In addition, what sets ViaBTC.com apart is their hourly payouts, auto withdrawal, and conversion system, which I gotta say is super convenient. Go check out ViaBTC.com today via the link in today's video description and tell them the hobbyist miner sent you. All right, so check it out. This is not what the ASIC looks like inside of there. I'll throw up some images and video of what the ASIC actually looked like when I pulled it out to give you guys an idea. It did not have a power supply connected to it via PCI cables. It wasn't even in this same chassis and it did not have these cooling fans at all. It was in pieces pretty much and uh, here's what we have. So I've gone ahead and made this a little pet project. I am not looking at profitability. I'm not looking at how much Bitcoin I'm making off of this. This is really a fun pet project, which some of you guys may literally turn off the video at this point because you live and breathe profitability. But for me, mining and content creation is also fun as well. So what we did was I ended up having to buy a new chassis, uh, which was super cheap off of eBay. I had a Bitmain power supply. This is an APW power supply, very similar to what you see with the L3s. Uh, and this one wasn't bad. I think it was under $50 as well. I got, I think, three of these actually, uh, which was super, super cheap. And then I ended up having to buy, uh, I didn't have any more of the high RPM fans, so I bought one for the front and one for the back. But at the end of the day, this is exactly pretty much like the hardware and tech of the Bitmain Antminer S9i, the 14 terahash unit, as you guys can see, kind of day one, the way it comes. So I guess the big question now, and as I was mentioning too, is like, what do you do with this? Like an S9i is in no way, shape or form profitable. So pool mining with a Bitcoin miner like this doesn't make sense. Any guesses on what these guys use stock when it comes down to the watts? So it used to do back in the day, 14 terahash, right? Well, this thing used 1,320 watts just to get a measly 14 terahash. Now, it's all relative based off of, you know, uh, what the hash rate was at that time on Bitcoin and the technology and everything like that. But let's go over exactly what I plan to do with this. All right, so we're on my PC here on mine, the ASIC showing you guys right now at a 10 cent kilowatt hour, you'd be making $1.11 per day, which would cost you $3.17. So you would actually lose out on $2.06 total. So it absolutely does not make sense. Now there's a few different models of the ICE or the um, S9. So keep that in mind. This one here is the 14 tera hash at 1320. So what do I plan to do? Well, this is where Brains OS comes into play. And I've been super happy with Brains. Uh, I've been testing it out, playing with it for a few months now. And I thought, hell, let's go ahead and share. So Brains is a third party OS. And what really, you know, makes Brains stand out is the fact of the amount of functionality that you have with it. And that's kind of what we're going to do today. So we're going to install Brains OS on that S9. And we're actually going to go ahead and crank down the watts to like 300 watts total. And then we're going to solo mine with it because man, 300 watts solo mining. I'm very eager to see what type of hash rate we can get now. There is this Brains toolbox, so you guys can check that out and install that to deploy Brains onto machines on your network. Or what I did uh, was down here, you actually can do it via the SD card. Either way is a great way to do it. You go ahead and pick what model, S9, S17, or S19, and then they have a SD card image, kind of like HiveOS, 
or um, Luxor where you can install the image right on to the SD card and then off you go. If you guys want a video on this and you guys have some S9 sitting around or whatever, let me know. Leave a comment down below and uh, I can do a step-by-step -step guide. All right, I've already gone ahead and installed Brains on the SD card using Blina Etcher on my PC and I've plugged it in. Let's go ahead and get power and ethernet to it. Brains OS is installed. I love their interface, guys. It is so clean and looks so good. So it's only been up for a very short amount of time. You can see up here the hash rate's only 3.3 terahash, and it's saying about 378 watts. Our target is 300, but we'll go ahead and check on that in just a minute. So real simple and easy to use. You can actually see down here each of your hash boards, how they're performing, the terahash on each, as well as the volts. Look at that, nine volts right there, which is awesome. Uh, frequency here about 155. So the nice thing about Brains is it makes it really simple and easy for us miners, like if you're just getting into it and you're new. So under the configuration tab here, you can put in my solo pool, uh, I'm just using a, a CK pool, and then you also have your address there. But under performance is really where Brains OS shines. So you could come in here and do a power target, and I've set mine to 300. You can also do a hash rate target. So like if I wanted this thing, like I want some crazy hash rate, it'll try to achieve it for you, which is really slick. There's also a lot more in here. You can adjust temperatures and fans and all that fun stuff. I really haven't gotten into all the nitty gritty. I've really just dealt at the management and auto tuning. And you can actually see now it's actually still tuning for it which it's still running, it's gonna take some time. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the wall. <clears throat> so we're about 406 at the wall. You guys can see there, 407. Uh, so it's off by a tiny bit, something to keep in mind in the software. It's always good to check your watts at the wall. Let's take this over to my ASIC mining shed. We'll install it there and let it run for a while and see how it's doing. All right, we made it over to our ASIC shed. Say hi to all the birds. Hello. All right, let's head inside. All right, let's head inside. Got the lights on for you guys. Ready to go. If you guys are curious on some of our equipment, what we're running here, have an L7 up here, S19K Pro. We have an S19J Pro 100 terahash. S19J Pro 100 terahash. This is where we're gonna put our S9i in just a minute. Down here, we have another L7. We have our S19J Pro Plus, that's 117 terahash. This guy here is our unicorn in our group. This is the Canon Avalon A1346. It's 110 terahash. This is the unit I actually got from Crypto Miner Bros. Huge shout out to them, by the way. We also have down here an E9 Pro, another E9 Pro, and then finally, uh-oh, we got fault light on this guy we're gonna have to take a look at while we're here. This is the KD Light. Not necessarily profitable, it's right on the fine line with our electric rate of four cents, but let's get that rebooted or see what's going on with that. And then also, Let's get this guy plugged in right here in this bay and we'll take a look and see how it does. Check it out, we are up and running. Let's take a look on the computer here. Heck yeah. So right now, we're at 3.3 terahash solo mining at 378 watts in the software. However, we are tuning right now. This is an auto-tune process to try to get as close as we can to that 300 watts that we've requested. Looks like temps are really good. Let's go ahead here and show you guys again. Configuration, performance. There it is. Our target is 300 watts. Now, we're going ahead and mining to solo.ckpool.org. We are not making any money daily. I know some of you guys are new. There's a difference between solo mining and pool mining. Pool mining, you get paid out daily or weekly or monthly. With solo mining, you only get paid if you hit a block. 
It's kind of, think of it like a Bitcoin lottery. So this could run for years and years and years and never earn one penny. But if you hit a block, it's like six Bitcoin or something crazy. So going ahead and taking a look here, refreshing. This is what it looks like. Looks like our one minute hash rate is about 2.78, as well as our five minutes, 2.48. We can see down below here. This is some of it earlier when we had it on with our different worker. I just went ahead and swapped the worker name to dot S9i so we can track it as I think I'm gonna put some more on solo mining, which will be really, really cool. Let's go back and let's let this run. I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna report back in a few hours when the tuning is done. Because if we scroll down testing performance profiles, it's still trying to allocate everything. You know, 101 watts per hash board is kind of what it's aiming for. So let's give it a few hours and we'll check back and see how we do. In the meantime, let's see what it's doing at the wall. So at the wall, we're at 398 watts, so about 20 watts more than what's being reported in the software. Let's check back in a few hours. All right, guys, we are back home, and it's actually been several hours. If we scroll down, it's actually been seven hours and 26 minutes. So it took a while. We let this run, and I'll be honest with you, the tuning took a long time, but look at these results. Real-time hash rate, 3.2 terahash. And right now, power usage says 306 with a target of 300. The tuning is done. It says stable. So if you remember, 20 watts was kind of the average. So think about it. We're getting 3.2 terahash at 326 watts at the wall. Man, Brains OS, so cool. I love this, having the ability to take some of this old hardware and go ahead and repurpose it for solo mining. For 326 watts, I'm not really concerned about ROI or about profitability or about any of that. So scrolling down the software, let's take a look at a few things that may be interesting to you guys. You can see each of our hash boards here is doing just over one terahash. You can see our voltage is down to 7.9. Remember originally it was at nine when we started this, we're down to 7.9. And it's kept the frequency at 155 megahertz. Dropping down below is another big one. Take a look here. You can see per hash board, it's only using 77 watts total. Now, as I said, I'm still really brand new to Brains OS, but I've been super happy with it thus far, especially with some of this old hardware. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me today and checking out this video. I'm very curious. I'm going to throw it out to you guys. What are you guys doing with your old hardware? I mean, this thing sat on my shelf for months. So I was like, man, I got to do something with it. And why not solo mine with it? I mean, I firmly do believe everyone should have some type of hardware solo mining Bitcoin. It's worth it, right? I mean, even if you're doing something as little as like one of those little um, uh, USB miners, you know, that uses 10, 20 watts and still has a little bit of hash rate, like 100 or 200 giga hash, I feel like it's still worth it to have something solo mining Bitcoin. Why not, right? It's worth it in this regard. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap things up for today. I'm gonna keep an eye on the comments. Curious, who's got another S9 out there and is gonna jump on this opportunity with brains? I'll keep an eye on the comments. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see when I drop my next video, go ahead and click that bell and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.